All right, guys. Um, this is the PowerPoint that goes over your vocab and the uh, a lot of the pretests that you did for acids and bases. So we'll go ahead and just get right into it. So you can remember, you can skip forward, you can go backwards as many times as you want. Um, you can stop it and copy stuff down. In fact, I'm giving you a grade to get this information down on your own paper. You're going to take a picture of it, um, your notes that you do, and then you will um, attach it to the document that I attach with this. So you can show your notes and everything, and I can give you a grade for that. It's the easiest 100 you should be able to get, right? Okay, so let's see. All right, so pH scale. Um, we asked a couple of questions on the pretest that have to do with this. So what you should know about the pre pH scale is that it goes in powers of 10. pH literally sounds for power hydrogen. So it is the power of the hydrogen ions, okay? Power of the hydrogen ions. And they go up by powers of 10. Okay, um, the higher the concentration of H plus, the lower the pH. So it goes kind of the opposite way. Okay, so a one right here is actually going to be very, very, very strong acids. And what are some examples of strong acids? You got your gastric content, so like your your gastric acids. You got vinegar at three, <coughs> four. Um, you start getting like tomatoes at five. Blood plasma. So here's where you're going to get to neutral, right? Okay, so right here, this right here is neutral. This is going to be deionized water. Okay, so you get to seven, that's neutral. That's going to be like deionized water. So not the stuff that you find in San Antonio where you get a glass of water and you have those little precipitate. Oh, yeah, you know what that word means, right? So little white flakes that end up in your, your water out of the sink is um, limestone. It's car calcium bicarbonate, right? Since we live basically on a big plate of limestone in San Antonio, um, it's almost impossible without getting a water softener to get rid of that stuff. So that's going to obviously, um, because calcium bicarbonate is basic, it's going to end up raising the pH a little bit, okay? Because that's going to be closer to, say, um, I guess like baking soda. Yeah, baking soda is going to be kind of like the calcium bicarbonate, so it's going to raise the pH just a little bit. You're, you're obviously not drinking a water of pH of 9, because right? so that wouldn't be good for you. It's going to do some bad chemistry with all the cells in your body if the pH is too high or too low. Okay, but what you should know, um, maybe not for this class so much, but when you go to chemistry, you'll have to do calculations with this. When I go from a pH of 1 to 2, my, hydron my hydrogen ions, they multiply by 10. When they go up another one, 10 to 2, this is another multiplication by 10. So what's happening here is every pH value, so each pH number is equal to times 10, a power of 10. Okay? All right. So then we get to the middle here. We got neutral pH. Everything above here is going to be basic. Calling all the basic IPC students, right? So this is all basic. This is acidic, so this is the dividing line right here. This is really messy. I'll get rid of all this stuff in a second so you can at least copy this down. All right. so perhaps you can get this stuff down better than I can. Let's see. Okay, let's see. There's got to be a better way to do this. There we go. Yeah, a little better. Okay, so what types of things are going to be your bases? They're going to be things that have OH negative attached to it. Acids are going to have H plus ions attached to it. So this is called a hydrogen ion. This is called a hydroxide. Okay, hydroxide. Not Scott. Definitely not Scott. All right, hydroxide, and this is hydrogen ion on the left side, hydrogen ion. Okay, so your cleaners and stuff like that are going to be more basic, <clears throat> drain cleaner. Um, you know that if you wanted to kill roaches, you could actually just drop, like, some soapy, like, liquid dish soap on them because the bottoms of their bodies are actually more acidic than um, seven. They're kind of going to be more around here. And that's because they live like in places that are really dirty and acidic anyway, so they want to have something that's going to be <clears throat> a similar pH, so that way they're not doing chemistry when they're walking on the ground. Okay, next slide. All right, acids. We went over this a little bit. It's something that produces hydrogen ions in water solution. So remember that water is H2O. Water is H2O. Okay, but we can rewrite this as HOH, okay? So you notice here that if I break off, because there's a, your little bonds right here. If I were to break off this guy right here, you notice that this guy would fly away as an H plus. And this guy right here would fly off as an OH negative, okay? OH negative, okay? And that's pretty interesting, right? Um, you remember the oxidation value of oxygen is two, or negative two? 
And so that one hydrogen isn't enough to balance it out, so it ended up with a negative, negative charge there, right? So you see that water has all of the components to be able to make either an acid, a hydrogen ion containing compound, or a base, an hydroxide containing compound, okay? So <clears throat> this may also be written as hydronium ions. Hydronium just means it's got H3O, okay, H3O. Deuterium is H, uh, heavy hydrogen, right? But that's, that's it right there. Okay, what are some properties of acids? It turns litmus paper red. Uh, if you ever do chemistry, you'll actually make your own pH paper using cabbage with Dr. Colston or um, Keggy. Keggy's the other guy. I think there are a couple other ones, but I forget. Okay. Um, acids are thought to have sour tastes. What are something that you know that's sour? Or you got like oranges, which I wrote with the yellow for some reason. Oranges, lemons, limes. Isn't it kind of weird that like if you come from a Spanish-speaking language culture, like limon and Lemon are like opposite of what we call in English lemon and lime. It's weird, right? Okay, anything from zero to seven is going to be considered acidic and reacts with metals to form hydrogen gas. Okay, and what did we say earlier? We said like we're talking about that's a good way to kind of remember it, right? Um, hydrogen gas, though, remember is going to be H2. Okay. It's an electrolyte. What is an electrolyte? It's what plants crave, right? I'm just kidding. No, don't remember that. Plants crave. No, don't remember that. That's just something for Thompson and I and us old, old heads that we know. We know the reference to that. Okay, electrolyte is something that's able to carry an electric current when dissolved into solution. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture of that real quick. So I got, let's see, gray glass. The good old gray glass coming back, right? Okay, so I got this right here. I get this block of, of electrolyte bar, and I throw it in there. It breaks up. Electrolyte bar is electrical, right? Water, actually, H2O, is not a conductor, right? I know you think like, oh man, I get in the bathtub, I take a bath with my clock radio, I have very bad time, right? But it's not really the water. If you were in pure deionized water, if you were in like that little baby, baby water that you get from the store, deionized water, and you filled that up in your bath and you got in and you could take a bath with your toaster if you wanted to. You really could. The problem is, is that your bath is really not clean. The water isn't clean. Like you, even if you were to do that, you have salts all over your body. So it's going to conduct a charge, right? But if everything was perfect and you were to put like your body in there and it was completely clean already and there were no salts at all and you got in with deionized water, um, you technically speaking could take a bath with your radio and you wouldn't electrocute yourself, okay? <clears throat> so what would we do to, to make it so that you will electrocute yourself is we'd add some, some sort of a solute in there that is electrical, an electrolyte in nature that when it breaks up, it now is a solution, homogeneous solution. You want it to be homogeneous, otherwise it's not going to conduct a really a nice charge. Imagine if, right, just for a second, get rid of all these little dots right there. Imagine if this block didn't actually dissolve. Yeah, no, crazy story, right? Imagine if that block didn't dissolve and it just stayed here at the bottom. Okay, so now I got this electrical little conductive material, like a piece of metal or something, but since it didn't break up, there isn't like a chain of molecules. There isn't a chain of molecules throughout the entire solution that could conduct a charge through, right? So I'm not going to be able to do this. Zip, 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 zip. There's an electro, electro, electrical charge. It can't do that, right? But if I do this and I break it up and make sure, what are some factors that will make a will make a solute dissolve into solution and become homogenous. We got things like heat, we got mixing, we got we got pressure. All right. So now that this electrolyte's broken up, it has created it has created a solution that will conduct a charge throughout. So that's what an electrolyte is. Okay. Acids are corrosive. Okay? Stronger acids have very low pH. And stronger acids typically guys are gonna be really, really short formulas. Okay, they're really short formulas. How can you tell something's a strong acid when you go to college and you need to remember this? Really good rule of thumb. H boom. See? Two letters, strong. Okay? You start getting into acetic acid, right? Acetic acid's super, super, super long. Not a very strong um, acid because it has so many bonds all over the place. It's not able to quickly attract ions all over the place, right? Let me see if I can find an example of that real quick. All right, so here's acetic acid. Acetic acid is uh, one of the acids that's in vinegar okay, when you distill a little bit, um, but that's the formula right there, CH3COOH. So you see that right there? That's a really, really, really long formula. It's considered a weak acid because of the electronegativity, the bond strengths between the atoms that are there in the compound, 
it right. makes exactly. it very hard to kind of overcome and very easily trade ions with other other metals and things like that. Okay. Moving on, here's some common acids. We got hydrochloric acid, and hydrochloric acid is this. Sulfuric acid is H2S, H2SO4 is the formula for H sulfuric acid, and it is the combination of a hydrogen ion and um, sulfate. Nitric acid, HNO3, and that's hydrogen ion and nitrate. Carbonic acid, H2CO3, it's hydrogen and carbon, carbonate. Uric acid and urine, those are going to be uh, ammonia-based, ammonia, ammonium-based um, compounds there. Ascorbic acid, citric acid, acetic acid, we just went over that. Tannic acid and tea and wines, and that's not very strong, obviously, right? Tannic acid and tartaric acid and grapes. Just remember a few of those. Okay, bases. Substances that produce hydroxide ions, and we kind of went over that in that first slide when placed in water. So it's splitting up the water, it's pulling away the OH negative from the hydro hydrogen ion. Okay, so instead of turning the litmus paper red like we saw with acids, it's gonna turn it blue. Okay, it's slippery to the touch. It's something you need to know. So just think like soaps, right? Soaps are slippery when you touch them. They're not sour, but bitter. They have a pH range above seven. They react with cations to precipitate hydroxide. So remember precipitate means that crap that settles at the bottom. Settles at bottom of solution. Bottom of solution. Solution. Sorry about that. Okay, it's also corrosive and it is an electrolyte as well, which means it can carry a charge through water. High pH, 12 to 14, is going to be considered a very strong base. Okay, here's some common bases, y'all. Okay, <clears throat> so just remember if you see hydroxide in there, Hydroxide, 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 hydroxide. The only one you're, that doesn't really have hydroxide in it that you need to know is ammonia. So ammonia is going to be um, basic. And these are all tend to be cleaners, right? Of some sort. <clears throat> Aluminum hydroxide, color fast fabrics, antacid, water purification. Why would it help purify water? Well, it's going to take out things that are maybe acidic, right? Because it's going to bond to it. They have the opposite charge. Keep that in mind, right? So things that are acidic have that H+, plus. things that are basic have OH. So you put these together and they neutralize, right? <clears throat> this type of reaction right here will create waters and, and salts and stuff like that, but it also creates a lot of heat. So if you're ever in a situation where you've got, uh, like let's say, I don't know, um, a five liter beaker of 12 molar Hydrochloric acid, why would you ever have that much? I don't know, I don't know, but you might. You might be a teacher one day under a fume hood with 12 molar hydrochloric acid that you try to dilute into five liters of a five liter beaker, right? Use deionized water, right? So what are you gonna do? You got this acid, you obviously want to neutralize it with a base. So on that previous side, you saw baking soda was on there, right? So you put a little ba bit of baking soda. Unfortunately though, you didn't use safe lab practices and instead of putting it into a beaker by itself, you just accidentally drop the whole freaking box into the five, five liter beaker, and all of a sudden you have a, a volcano in your six period class, okay? So um, <clears throat> it creates a lot of heat, it creates a lot of gas because it's a chemical reaction, um, but I was fine, okay, I was, I was fine. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> that's, that's what's important. Okay. Um, you can also use bases to your advantage if your stomach is really, really upset, like it's burning. That's usually an acidic thing, it's not because you ate something hot. You can use something like a little bit of baking soda diluted, like a teaspoon of baking soda diluted into a big glass of water, and you will end up creating something like a calcium hydroxide or a magnesium hydroxide, right? And you can do that at home. Milk also does the same thing. Milk is basic, right? All right. Well, I hope this was helpful and somewhat um, informative. Um, hopefully, it'll save a life here and there. Um, good luck on your quest. I think we have Alien Juice Bar, the lab coming up. All right. Good luck. Godspeed.